Hi, I'm Daphne Richards, and this is Augie. Our question this week is from Mary, who's concerned about her mulch. She has a couple of bags of cedar mulch that have been stored outside since last year, and now there's mold growing in the bag. Is the mulch safe to use in a garden bed? Well, Mary, you should separate out the moldy portion and toss it in your compost pile, and the rest is safe to use. The moist environment in the bag, with all that yummy, dead organic matter, is the perfect place for mold and other fungal spores to take root. You don't want to use the moldy mulch in your garden, simply because it would serve as a source of spores for the colony to spread. But the mold is feeding on dead tissue, not living. So unless the bed was kept far too wet, the mulch wouldn't damage your plants. In fact, there are dormant mold spores just about everywhere, just waiting for the situation to be right so they can germinate and grow. But take away the environmental problems, such as too much moisture, and the colony will die out quickly. Soil's actually teeming with many different species of microbes, most of which pose no threat to normal plant life, and even help improve it by breaking down dead organic matter and converting it to life-giving nutrients. So when you toss the moldy mulch into your compost pile, other microbes get involved in the process and continue the job of breaking those wood chips down into smaller and smaller pieces until you have rich, humic compost to add back to your soil. So Mary, if you find that the mold is widespread throughout the bag, or if you just want to err on the side of caution, you should simply cut the whole bag into your compost pile and let nature run its course. To continue with our edible theme, this week's plant is okra which is a fabulous plant for Central Texas gardens. Okra thrives in the heat and is actually quite beautiful, so consider using it as a specimen plant in the landscape. Like most of our warm season vegetables, okra may be planted as both a spring and fall crop, but fall here doesn't equate to what most of us think of as fall. Here in Central Texas, we must plant our fall gardens in late July or August, since you'll need to plant in summer in order to reap a harvest in the fall. There are many great cultivars of okra to choose from, but one of my favorites is burgundy, which as its name implies has deep burgundy fruits and even quite a bit of burgundy color in the leaves and stems. Okra requires full sun and minimal water, so very little supplemental irrigation is needed. But if you water at least once a week, you'll get a lot better harvest. An area with well-drained soil is best, and if you're preparing a new area, it's a good idea to incorporate about an inch of compost to the bed. As the compost breaks down over time, it improves the structure of the soil and adds a small amount of nutrients slowly. Okra will also benefit from a little fertilizer, which you can add after the first harvest to ensure that the plant has plenty of nutrients to produce more fruit. Okra gets very tall, so they need plenty of soil depth to anchor themselves. In shallow, rocky soils, they may fall over. So give each plant about a foot on each side to fill in. This fairly narrow width and taller height might make okra a nice addition to a spot where you've had winter annuals that have now died back. For a list of okra and other vegetable cultivars, visit our Travis County Extension website. And if you'd like to learn more about Fall Vegetable Garden, consider signing up for a class on August 8th. More information about that on centraltexashorticulture.blogspot.com. We'd love to hear from you, so please visit klru.org ctg to send us your questions and plants of the week. Thank you.